voices shall continually be in my mind No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Father have your way in this place You be glorified in it all Come on let's raise it together and say I will bless the Lord at all times And His praises praises shall continually be No matter what I see, no matter what I see As long as I'm breathing Oh yes, I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing Oh yes, I'm breathing Come on, say, oh magnify
What's up, Wings of Love? It's Malachi Jackson, and this is Ja'Kai Miller. I need you to go subscribe to the Wings of Love YouTube page. And what else do they need to do? Hit that bell. What else? And hit that like button. That's all. It's that easy. So I hope that you subscribe. It's that simple. God bless you. We have entered into a new year, 2021. And my brothers and sisters, we collectively should enter this new year being optimistic, looking on the bright side, not pessimistic, looking on the dark side of things. Let me tell you what you ought to put in your mix for 2021. Pastor Jay is doing it. You ought to put in your mix this ingredients. Faith, hope, and love. Faith looks to, hope looks for, but love looks at. Let me tell you, that's good ingredients that you ought to put into your mix for 2021. And my brothers and sisters, we can look back and give God praise, glory, and honor for the good and the bad in 2020. This is Super Sunday, the first Sunday of the year. We are still not in the sanctuary, but we are working on it, preparing ourselves to come back. They are still working inside the sanctuary, new innovations. And so we ask that you would pray for them Oh, Wings of Love members, let me tell you, you're going to come in with excitement on your faces when you see what we have done in this sanctuary. Because I want you to know where your money is going during this pandemic. We're not going to waste finances. We have monitors, a new screen. Oh, okay, I'm going to stop right there. Okay, I, I don't want to destroy to destroy uh, your expectation. I don't want to disturb it. So continue to pray for the Wings of Love Ministries and not only for the Wings of Love Ministries and church family, but pray for Christendom as a whole that we would continue to share our testimony no matter how tough times are. It's offering time. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you that giving is important because God gave his only begotten son and God is a great giver. So we ought to model and pattern ourselves after our God. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand that we're just stewards of what we have. God has, has entrusted us with money car that we have is a borrowed car, the house that we have is a borrowed house, the clothes that we wear is borrowed clothes. The money that you possess belong to God. Freely you receive, freely you ought to give. My brothers and sisters, don't give sparingly, then you're going to reap sparingly. You ought to give bountifully, then you're going to reap bountifully. Bring ye all the tithe offering into the storehouse storehouse kept meat and valuables 
resources, things that they needed, necessities. And so the storehouse, my brothers and sisters, is the church. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, God said, I'll open up the window of heaven and pull you out a blessing. Now I want you to understand that money is not going to come out of the sky. And some people say money grow on trees, but money don't grow on trees. But then you think about it, <laughs> wood, paper. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try, the more you give, God will give back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Offering says, Lord, thank you. Tithe say, Lord, I trust you. I don't know what you're talking about preaching. I am the one who get up and go to work. I'm the one who work all those hours. Let me tell you if God would take or zap your health and strength, you wouldn't be able to get up and go to work. So my brothers and sisters, it is God who give you the health and strength to make the money. It is God who give you power to get wealth. Oh, I feel the anointing. God is getting ready to move you even as I speak on this Sunday morning from not enough, <laughs> move you from just enough to more than enough. I need you to believe that with me, my brothers and sisters on today. God has prospered us, a lot of us as believers in the body of Christ during this pandemic. And so keep on giving and giving and giving and God will provide for you because he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Thank you so much for your gifts and your generosity. And I am believing that God is going to supply all your needs. Yeah, okay, Trump got up and asked, could they give $2,000 to the citizens of the United States? Now they're saying $600, but whatever amount it is, we are just going to be thankful and grateful for it. And we still know that God will supply all of our needs. He'll give us some of our wants, but he will supply our needs. I really appreciate uh, my young people again for, I mean, giving out dinners, lunch, brunch, or whatever you want to call it. I'm, I, they took time out of their busy schedule. I tell you, my young people, boy, got it going on. They were out here serving during the Christmas holiday, on Christmas Day. And I believe it was 130 people that they served. And I was down here to witness it myself and my son, Minister Jackson, recorded it. Not that we want any accolades or that we want to be patted on the back. We just give God all the glory. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians. It was off the chain, Yane. <laughs> New Year's Eve going into New Year Day. Let me tell you, I, I had a good time sharing that word with you what God had given to me. But we have a word on this Super Sunday. And I believe that it's going to help you because even while I was preparing it, it was blessing me. And the title of that message is Wait It Out. How many know that's one of the hardest things for us to do is to wait it out. That means that we be patient and wait for an event or situation, don't miss this, to come to an end. Let me tell you what we are, what we are doing. We are always in a hurry. We are rushing. We think that our life has to be filled, listen to Pastor Jay, with activity and busyness. 
But peep this out, young people. Let, let me say to those who are educated, listen, during this pandemic, I'm sure that you will admit without reservations, we have had to wait it out because here we are in 2021 still in the midst of a pandemic. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you just have to wait no matter how long it takes. But let me encourage you, Pastor Jay, want to tell you on this first Sunday, this thing is soon going to be over. Just wait, because good things come to those that wait. Before we hear a word from the Lord, let's go and enter into our praise and worship experience. Let me tell you, you can have the word, but you need worship. You can have a sermon, but you have to have singing, amalgamated, compound, going together to bring about the powerful presence and magnificent glory of the Lord. All right, let's go into our praise and worship experience.
up your mouth all over this room. Open up heaven, open up heaven. There is a word from the Lord. I'd like to invite your attention to the Old Testament collection of writings, one of the books of poetry, one of the wisdom books, the book of Job, the 14th chapter and the 14th verse. The book of Job in the Old T, the Old Testament, chapter 14 and verse 14. It reads thus, if a man die, shall he live again? Question mark. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. I want you to focus your attention on the latter part of this passage where it says, all the days of my appointed time will, will, I wait till my change come. I'm going to take a text and talk about wait it out. Repeat after me, wait it out. Wait it out denotes to be patient and wait until something, someone some event, situation happens or resolves or come to an end. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you that I really believe in terms of predicaments that are problematic and during this pandemic, we are in a holding pattern. A holding pattern, brothers and sisters, is when an airplane circles around, if you will, the runway. It's frustrating and sometimes it's frightening. When the passengers is in the plane, they really can't do nothing about it. It is beyond their control, but the plane cannot land without waiting to get permission from the control tower to land. The ATC, the air traffic controller, has a radio, radar, and all of the devices that they need. And perhaps that plane is in a holding pattern because there may be an obstruction on the runway. And so the pilot and the co-pilot has to wait for instruction. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters, they continue to fly around awaiting clearance to land. I, I tell you, I know the passengers are frustrated and perhaps frightened, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, Sometime God will allow us to be in a holding pattern. Sometime, brothers and sisters, God allows it because maybe there could be an obstacle that could cause us to come to the point of destruction. See, if the plane does not listen to the instructions from the control tower, that plane could have an accident or crash. And my brothers and sisters doing uh, the holding pattern. Watch this. 
Activity is suspended. Progress is suspended. And I really believe, brothers and sisters, that God perhaps have us in a holding pattern, particularly during this pandemic, because it gives you time to talk to your children and then listen to what your children has to say. You, you never know what your children are experiencing because you're so busy. And, you know, we really don't get to know one another as a husband and wife because we are always active. And so perhaps you're in a holding pattern so you can really get to know your spouse better and your children to bring you closer. And some don't know how to handle the holding pattern. Uh, they have divorced and have experienced domestic violence. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that we are too busy. We are in a hurry. We are rushing. God has you in a holding pattern so that you can take time to have communion and fellowship with him. But when you're too active and busy and rushing and hurrying all the time, brothers and sisters, we neglect our prayer time and, and conversing with God. And so sometime God will allow you to be in that holding pattern so you can be still. And know that he is God. It's beyond your control. I know it's irritating and probably perhaps agitating. But you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, God wants you to learn to wait it out. Listen, my brothers and sisters, I remember watching the news several years ago. It was raining. I mean raining hard. And I mean, I'm saying to myself, shouldn't the cars continue? No, they did not continue down the expressway because their vision was obscured due to the heavy rainfall. Don't miss this. And I saw on the news several cars under the by dock. Why were they under the by dock? Because they were waiting it out till the rain ceased. And then they could continue toward their destination. And my brothers and sisters, let me pause to tell you that's why so many have gone to the point of ruin because we want to do things in a hurry. And let me tell you, during the storms and the rains, like the cars under the viaduct, you have to wait it out till the rain cease. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you some 27 to 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Why hard? Because the heart produces emotions and feelings. He says, wait, I say, on the Lord. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, patience is not only the ability to wait, but also the ability to have a good attitude while you wait. He who waits on God loses no time. Trust in God's timing. It's better to wait a while, listen, and have things fall into place than to rush and have things fall apart. No matter how long it takes, when God works, it's always worth the wait. 
Listen, brothers and sisters, I remember working at McDonald's. Yeah, I worked at McDonald's. I don't mind working because I don't like to beg nobody for nothing. And if a person ordered something special, because we already had the hamburgers, the cheeseburgers, the fish sandwiches, and et cetera, et cetera, already prepared. But if somebody would request or ask for something special, they would tell them to pull up and pull over. And so they would pull up and pull over because we were preparing what they asked for, what they requested, but it took some time. And so when we had finished, we took it out to the car. And when they received it, the fries was hot. The hamburger was still warm. It was worth the wait. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't you give up. Look now, don't you throw in the towel. Don't surrender. Because let me tell you that when you wait it out, oh, I'm feeling the anointing here. It's going to be worth the wait. In our waiting, God is working. This come with rewind. In our waiting, God is working. God has perfect timing. Never early, never late. I want you to know that he is an on time God. Yes, he is. Joseph waited 13 years. He had to go through the pit Potiphar's house prison before he was promoted. Abraham waited 25 years. God, you promised me a son, but the son did not come immediately. Sarah and Abraham didn't get together immediately. It was Abram and Sarai. Then Abraham and Sarah came together and Isaac was born. But you remember what happened? They just couldn't wait. And because they got in a hurry, they didn't wait it out. Here comes Ishmael. But Abraham waited 25 years before the promised child. Moses waited 40 years in the wilderness. Jesus waited 30 years before he began his public ministry. Why, Pastor Jay, are you telling me about Joseph, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus? I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, watch this. If God is making you wait, you're in good company. I am sure that God keeps no one this morning waiting unless he or she sees, unless he sees rather that it is good for him or her to wait. God will fulfill his promise. Wait patiently for God to act while we wait for God to work. For us, don't miss this. God is waiting to work through us. It remind me, brothers and sisters. I remember some of the older women back in the day on Thanksgiving when they would cook a turkey. They would put up a pop-up instrument in there. That instrument would register the temperature with the thermometer. Now listen, they would put it deep down in there. That timer, brothers and sisters, boom, the timer would pop up to let them know that the turkey was done. 
Oh, my brothers and sisters, let me pause to tell you some of you want God to just pop up. <laughs> but let me tell you, God is not going to pop up. He going to let you cook a while. Somebody talk to me. He going to let you experience the heat for a while until he know that you are done. So let me tell you, you're waiting on God to work for you. Let me tell you, God is waiting to work through you. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. The book of Job is most frequently pictured as a drama and tragedy that deals this morning with the age old question of human suffering and pain. Brothers and sisters, I'm sure that you have seen the sickness, the poverty, the hunger, and the death that exists upon this planet. And many are wondering, why do God allow it? Let me tell you, God's ways is not our ways. And so we need to understand, brothers and sisters, that God has a permissive will. And we need to understand that God is working for our good and his glory. God know how to bring good out of evil. He know how to turn a dark situation into a well-lit one. The story of Job opens with a brief description this morning of the man, his possessions, and his family. He owned thousands of sheep, camels, oxen, and donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. In simple terms, Job was considered a wealthy man. God, do not mind you having things, the material possessions of life, but we should never worship them. We should never uh, give allegiance to the things of life. We need to understand that God is more important than the goods. And he gives us, give us these things to enjoy, not to abuse and misuse, not to become selfish with, but to share with others. Job was blameless, upright, and avoided evil. But Satan insists that the integrity of this upright man has never been tested. Oh, you know the story. I don't have time to talk about how the son of God appeared before him and Satan was among them. You know the story. God bless you, Minister Hayes, who preached last Sunday about Job. He accuses Job of worshiping. And serving God only because God has protected him and all that he has. Well, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters. God sometimes allowed the devil to do things in our life so he can shut the devil's mouth. Frick, this come with rewind. Sometimes God allows the devil to attack us so he can shut the devil's mouth so he can show the devil that they love me, that they will be loyal to me, that they will worship me no matter what they are going through. Go ahead, devil. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. He was allowed to attack the things of Job, his family, and 
even Job's body, but he couldn't touch his soul. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you that you need to understand that in rapid fashion, Job's sons and daughters are killed and all his flocks are driven away by his enemies. Finally, Job himself stricken with a terrible skin disease. If we would go to where he is, if we had the opportunity, you'll smell the stench. First of all, my first point is the reversals of life. In other words, the changes of life as a fortune often for the worse. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you, we can be up one moment and down the next. The sun could be shining. Watch this, and you've even seen it. And at the same time, it could be raining. So we need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that life is going to change. The moon change. Styles change. Fashions change. People change. Your situation in life is going to change. First of all, the reversals of life. It changed in Job's life. Calm one moment, chaotic the next. In his sorrow, he sits mourning on an ash heap, scraping his sores with a piece of pottery while he laments. He sobs, he, he cries over his misfortune. Oh, can you imagine one runner came to tell him what had happened to his children. Another runner came and told him what has happened to his livestock. Somebody said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. This is when Job's three friends, Elphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, arrived to moan with him and to offer their comfort. You know, brothers and sisters, I, you got to be careful when you're experiencing sorrow and suffering in life and somebody always come to you. You know, that's what my uncle went through. That's what my, my auntie went through. That's, that's what my mother, my father. They don't need to hear that. You need to understand, my brothers and sisters, when you go to them, you need to come with some comfort and consolation. They don't want to hear what happened to your mother or your father, your uncle, or your auntie who was in the same predicament. Let me tell you, we ought to rejoice with those that rejoice. And we ought to cry with those that cry. But instead of comforting Job, they gave long lectures and philosophical debates to show Job the reason for his suffering. Listen. Their line of reasoning follows the general accepted view of their time. And I believe even today that misfortune is always sent by God as punishment for sin. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. We need to understand that all suffering is not because of sin. Don't you miss this? But sin will bring suffering. And so you got to be careful when you start looking at other people's situation and circumstances and being critical and judgmental and you don't know the facts of what is going on. Don't you know? Sometimes God tests us. Sometimes God, listen to me on this, on this first Sunday in 2021, sometimes God has to test your commitment. Sometimes God has to test your loyalty. You talking about you love God all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength? God would have to allow some trouble to come. Some trauma to come. 
to see if you really love him like you say you do. Sometimes he do me the same way. Have to test my Lord. Have to test my love. Have to test my trust. He have to test my commitment. Because Satan said, I'll tell you what, if you take that from him, I bet you he'll curse you to your face. Oh, my brothers and sisters. But he foiled <laughs> Satan's attack. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let me pause to tell you, watch this. Job argues just as strongly that he is righteous, I'm hurrying, pious, and honest, who has done nothing to deserve such treatment at the hand of God. You know, brothers and sisters, I look at the lives of some people that's corrupt, lives that are evil, and you know they deserve some of the things I believe that happened to them, but we always wonder why do the righteous suffer when the evil seems to prosper? And my brothers and sisters, let me tell you that payday is coming. They're going to reap what they sow. They're going to end up in hell. But those who are of God, heaven will be your reward. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, we ought to be thankful. I've said this before. God allows from his hand prosperity and adversity. Sometimes God have to allow, watch this, adversity before prosperity because we need a balance in our life. God know how to balance our life. No problem with me because as long as I'm in his hands, I know everything is going to be all right. God himself speaks from a whirlwind. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Job 38, 1 says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, in other words, a violent storm, and said in verse 2, Who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Who is it? that is confused about this situation, who, who, who want to question me, my counsel. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, God has never had to go to college. He never had to attend any university because he has all knowledge and all wisdom. And so, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. God sometimes would speak in a whisper. But here he speaks in a whirlwind to Job. And even in a whirlwind, while he's speaking, brothers and sisters, Job had to wait it out. Verse 4 says, Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. First of all, I see the reversals of life. Then, secondly, the reliance on the Lord, meaning dependence, trust in someone or something. My brothers and sisters, listen to verse 14. And I'm getting ready to draw to my clothes. In the 14th chapter of Job, verse 14 says, If a man die, shall he live again? Job knew, brothers and sisters, that man would be resurrected again, but he thought he would be resurrected on the earth, but man would be resurrected again after death. Let me tell you, he says, If 
Amen. Thou shall he live again? Well, let me tell you who answered Job's question. Not Jackson. Jesus answered it and said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Jesus answered Job's question. Listen, he said, all of the days of my appointed time. Listen, what Job was really saying, let me hurry. And all the days of my warfare, one translation said, all the days of my heart service. You got to understand that our times are in God's hands. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Job knew that in the midst of the, his trials, in the midst of his trauma and test and tribulation, that a change, come on, talk to me, was coming. But it did not come automatic, did not come instantly. He said, watch this. I will. When he say, watch this, I ain't making this up, you know, all of my point of time, will I? Let me change it around and say, I will. I will. Wait till my change come. I think I ought to tell you in 2021, if you wait it out, <laughs> a change is coming. Oh, my brothers and sisters. They used to have old church song, Lord, help me to hold out until my change come. My way may not be easy. You did not say it would be. But when it get dark and can't see my way, that's when I put my trust in thee. He said, my brothers and sisters, I know that a change is coming. The change may come on earth or the change may come in eternity. You know, my brothers and my sisters, God revealed himself as the powerful and all knowing God. God's message to Job is that he does not have to explain or justify his actions. He is the sovereign, all powerful, and who always does what is right. And although his ways may be beyond our understanding you know my brothers and sisters uh, we need to know that while we are trying to figure it out God has already worked it out mm -hmm. Job is humbled by this outpouring of this great whirlwind which was an emblem or symbol of my God's power. And uh, Job said, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. Mm -hmm. But now uh, mine eyes see you. In other words, what Job was saying, now, Lord, I understand uh, that uh, you were causing me to wait it out. Mm -hmm. And this was his great affirmation of faith. Then we need to understand uh, that the book closes uh, with the birth of more sons uh, and more daughters uh, and uh, Job rises uh, to a position even greater than he was in before. And uh, 
You know God gave Job more than he ever had before. Mm. My final point is the restoration after a loss. Do you hear me? Yeah. What it really means is the action of returning something to a former owner. Yes. You know, my brothers and my sisters, as I draw to my clothes, I want you to know, oh, my God, oh, oh, my God can make a ladder greater than our former. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, yes, if you wait it out, I come to tell you, God has a blessing waiting on you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh! Oh! Oh, 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 let me tell you, the book of Job teaches us that God is good, God is just, and God oh, 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 is fair in his dealings. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I don't know how you feel about it, but during this pandemic, I'm going to weed it out. I need somebody who believe with me. Yeah. Trouble. Mm. Trouble. Mm. Oh, trouble. Oh, oh, trouble don't last always. After an operation, yes, then comes the recovery. I remember, I remember, I, re I remember when my wife was being operated on. Yes, they had on the wall a board lit up. And if you wanted to know if she was still in the operating room while I was in the waiting room, you just look at the board and it would tell you that she had several hours still in the operating room. And I'll go sit down in the waiting room and then I'll go back up and look at it. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And when I get up, and go look at it, I'll see recovery. Mm -hmm. Then, after she comes out of recovery, I can go in and see her, though she was a little drained and a little groggy. Mm -hmm. Do y'all hear me? I'm closing him now, but let me tell you, while you're waiting it out, God, oh, God, oh, oh, God is operating on you. You are in the operating room. God is working on you. And let me tell you, just wait it out because recovery, I said recovery, oh, you're going to move from the operating room to the recovery room. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And when you come out of the operating room and God performs surgery on you, God is going to bring you out. Others going to see. Yeah. When you waited it out, somebody is going to see you come out. That's why Job said, I shall come forth like pure gold. Oh, 
thank you, Lord. I'm waiting, but while I'm waiting it out, Lord, work on me. Lord, work on me. Oh, oh. Work on me. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting. Won't God work it out? Won't God work it out? If you keep on waiting. Oh, wait it out. Help is on the way. I'm gone now. Oh, wait it out. Help is on the way. Oh, wait it out. Comfort is on the way. Oh, wait it out. Oh, wait it out. Oh, wait it out. God bless you. Let me tell you, my brothers. Just wait it out. Let me say to those been taking too long to give God your life. This is your chance and your opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Only thing you got to do is repent, confess your sins. It's just that simple. All that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Bow your head, God our Father, we pray. For those who are listening, streaming live, who are not born again, that you would fill them with the precious Holy Ghost, that you would change them, that you would blot out their sins and their iniquities, that they will become a member, a citizen of your kingdom through Christ Jesus, is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus Christ left two ordinances with the church. Church means called out ones. One is baptism and the other is communion. And during this first Sunday, we want to take time out to partake of the Lord's body and his blood. His blood, he said, is drink indeed body is meat indeed. We take a retrospective look back over 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross. He shed his precious blood. There it got darker than a thousand midnights. He died. And then finally he gave up the ghost and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Take a retrospective look. Then we can take an introspective look. Paul says, let a man examine himself. We need to uh, look within ourselves, soul search. If there's anything that's contrary to God's will and way, we need to ask him to forgive us. If we've uh, done anything to offend another, we need to go to that person, apologize. Even if they've passed on, we need to confess that right now. When we take an introspective look, calls us not to look at somebody else but to look at ourselves. Then we take a prospective look when Jesus shall come again in his majesty and power. We will meet him in the air in that rapture. That's a prospective look because Jesus is coming again. So tonight I want you, or this morning rather, I want you to take your bread and your wine. Listen to what 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, this is Paul talking, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. 
This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. Then he said after the same manner, this is Paul talking. Also he took the cup. Paul talking about Jesus. When he had supped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And wherefore, whosoever drinketh shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. In other words, they were treating the Lord's Supper like they were at a picnic. Paul wanted them to have reverence and respect for the Lord's Supper. So let's drink together. Let me say this, my brothers and my sisters. I know that it is not easy and sometimes it's difficult to wait it out. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, that while you are waiting it out, God has something good for you. Let me tell you what, what God want to do while you're waiting it out. He want to make you better. <laughs> he want to make you stronger. He want to make you wiser. Thank you, Marvin Sam. I know that this pandemic, let me tell you, I am tired of wearing masks. I'm tired of social distancing. I can't hug. I can't kiss my grandchildren like I want to. Embrace my children. To fellowship with the members of Wings of Love. And even with some of my other comrades in the ministry. I know that you are tired too. But let me tell you, wait it out. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. I just told you. Job would tell us in 2021, wait it out. And let me tell you what happened to me. God gave me double for my trouble. <laughs> oh, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I don't like to wait at the bank on the teller. I don't like to wait in the grocery store. And how many know, brothers and sisters, you can be in front of a microwave. Sometimes the microwave take too long. You don't even want to wait in front of that. But let me tell you, during this time, God is teaching us how to wait it out. So my brothers and sisters, be encouraged to wait because God is working. Let me say that again. While you're waiting, God is working and continue to worship. Because Job did not blame God. He didn't accuse God. Even while he was waiting it out, he continued to worship. God bless you. And may health, wealth, and prosperity be yours spiritually first. There are three ways that you can give, and we really appreciate your sacrificial gifts. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more God will give back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Sow your seed. Don't eat your seed. Sow your seed. And watch God send you a great harvest. Expect a harvest. Even in the midst of a famine, God can turn it into a feast. I love you. God love you too.